Hello beautiful beings, um, thanks for joining me. Um, wow, I don't very often do a YouTube live, so thanks for joining. I just felt guided because I'm in Cornwall and as you can see I'm at my little chalet called Sea Angel. If you want to ask any questions you can put post them in the column on the side and uh, the title of this video is about past lives um, pertaining really to, hi Johanna, thanks for joining, um, really pertaining to where we are now which is the 29th of April 2021 and it feels like people are projecting a huge amount of fear. Um, so you've got fear from one angle, ding ding, and then you've got this fear from this other angle of actually spell casting, and this is the thing, spell casting onto people to be fearful of the people who have been being, like there could be some side effects to that. And there's been people talking about side effects to periods. And I think more than likely, what is happening is the side effects that people are saying from being around, they want to believe it's being around people who've had the binging. And yes, their energy fields and their auras may have changed, but I think the side effects that they're pertaining to be side effects are actually maybe um, picking up the planetary changes because we're going through um, a magnetic frequency change on the planet, which is the awakening, the end of the 26 year thousand. 26 year thousand cycle which you know the Mayan said was 2012 the Ethiopian calendar ended at the end of December 2020 um so I think whether it's technology or whether it's actually natural this magnetic energy field is shifting the pole shifts happening and what happens when the sun goes through what's called the solar minimum and that is definitely happening a solar minimum uh hi rachel thank you um when you go through a solar minimum you get more radiation on the planet so perhaps what's happening is people's bodies are being affected by these side effects of the radiation which could affect their menstrual cycle and we want to find a perpetrator you know and it's much easier to find a human to blame or humans to blame than a cycle now of course we know there is human manipulation there is beings who've been controlling this reality for a long time and don't want to give up their um, frequency of control but as I've said in other videos it was my intuitive understanding that back at the end of February 2021, um, the overlords, so to speak, left this planet, left this vibration. They were no longer a vibrational match to be in this reality, this cosmos, this universe. Um, so they left. Now, that was my intuition telling me that. I've also seen other people say a very similar thing. I've spoken about this in posts or videos on Facebook. And other people said that they felt that they would left. One person was really specific and said they thought they'd the overlord energies had left on the um, 17th of February. I found somebody else saying a similar thing to me. So that would lead me to believe it's a similar time frame. Um, so what you've got left is very deeply programmed humans. And how does that pertain to past lives? <laughs> well, everything, everything we're all experiencing is all really interwoven into coexisting timelines. Now we talk about the past lives and I've always talked about the past lives as if they're in the past but I do also explain that there are actually coexisting timelines that's why in regression or when I tune into your emotional Akashic records to help you heal and clear things um, we can tune into those timelines as if they're, all, they're still existing now but it's not um that they're kind of overlaid emotionally into your reality now so you're tuned into your emotional reaction is often not linked to this lifetime. It's linked to the emotional trauma you've not cleared in the subconscious mind running in the background. Now, yesterday, as you know, I deal a lot with entities as well. And so yesterday I had a lady who had um, a sister from three lifetimes still attached to her. 
And she kind of knew, even though she was new to this kind of inner work, she'd had the experience of someone trying to strangle her once and wondered what that was. And then it turned out it was this entity who'd been attached to her, her sister three lifetimes ago. And it was a complex story. And I made a post this morning on Facebook about jealousy. And this girl had been her sister in a past life and had been jealous of her and uh, over a man, of course. And uh, her way of resolving that was to uh, be bitter and twisted because this man wanted to be with her sister who was actually older than her. And, and the man in question didn't even see this girl as an adult. He saw her as a child, um, but she'd held this resentment. She'd never really moved on from it, the, the sister. So, um, She'd held on to that bitterness. She'd ended up living with them because she'd never actually moved on from this emotion of jealousy or feeling like her sister got something she wanted, which is the sibling rivalry we often see. And of course, sibling rivalry is often linked to past lives, whether you've known that sibling in a past life or it's linked to your wounded inner child and how you reacted to that sibling arriving in this lifetime. You know, where is all this come from siblings? I don't personally have a sibling in this lifetime, so I've never experienced that sibling rivalry, but I've worked with lots of you who have had to work through sibling issues, you know, and uh, where does that all come from and how can we resolve that? So that's one of those aspects. Um, thanks for saying it's nice to see me. Does anyone have any questions? because we really are talking about how we can move beyond um it's not to go into denial right now yes there is a lot of negativity being cast upon us by the puppeteers of um a reality they're trying to push but the big energy that's behind it's already left so you've just got the instructions that they were given um before those beings left so they're just carrying out what they were kind of guided to do but there's no real energy to keep feeding that reality so if there's no real energy behind it to keep feeding that reality um it's going to fall to pieces eventually now that doesn't mean it's going to fall to pieces right now it's maybe going to take who knows because time's an illusion how long it's going to take for that perceived reality of how we live on planet earth to decimate itself um that is coming from a non-loving non-harmonious way of being on the planet so let's just see if anyone's saying anything johanna's saying i feel all trauma is coming up now in heaps yeah because there's nowhere else for anyone to go. There is nowhere else to go except inward. Now, in the illusion, in the Maya, people think there are other places to go. You know, they're looking outside of themselves. They're trying to find resolution outside of themselves. And of course, the only resolution can be found is owning your own Akashic records, which is the timelines of your own soul's experience, and finding resolution within yourself. Uh, it's nice to see Rachel is there. I'd love your thoughts on um, Q, Trumpikins, and uh, as you call them, on this new quantum financial situ system. Do you know, I'm not sure about all that. I'm not sure. Um, Again, it might be a truth, it might not be a truth. Uh, you have to go with what you personally feel, I think. Um, I think there's a lot going on in the background. Um, no matter what system you have financially, unless you found resolve within yourself, it's not necessarily going to work for you <laughs> because you haven't found the resolution inside yourself. So we change you know, using coins for shells or crypto or something. And um, I think Bitcoin's probably had its day, although I do have Bitcoin, um, in the fact that it is controlled. So it's not free. You know, it's it, it, it can be traced where, you know, cash cannot be traced. Anything else can be traced. Now, that could have a positive aspect because we're getting rid of all the people who were laundering huge amounts of money, maybe. That, that's the positive aspect of maybe getting rid of cash. Um, but the negative side of getting rid of cash is that every movement, every penny you spend is monitored and controlled and can be seen where, where you are, where you were spending money, who you were spending it on. 
it's control, it's big brother control. So there's a dark side to that. So everything has a polarity, if that makes sense. Um, let's see what else anyone is saying. I try to feel as much love and peace in my heart as much as I can, it seems challenging. Yeah, it's not to deny you have fear, it's not to deny anxiety. I think a lot of people are having horrific anxiety now and they're trying to find some short-term resolution in their anxiety and of course we've never had um you know the government in the uk has a page called the fourth industrial revolution you know they're making no um hiding if you look in the right places to see that they're using this as a catalyst to change society to change how people live globally and in the uk now there can be a positive aspect of it i mean yesterday i was talking to estate agents and in, i'm in cornwall at the moment and property's going like hot cakes down here you know it's just property's going but i think what people are doing whereas this would be their second home in cornwall for a lot of people before who've got money um they're now switching their house in the cities or London or where they worked to be their second home and they're now choosing quality of life as their first home so they're choosing to live in a more natural harmonious environment now yes that's a problem if you're not necessarily in abundance yourself and you don't have the finances at disposal that they have now on the other side of that most of the people who are going through that process are also the kind of people who are doing the bing 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 so you know it swings and roundabouts as to you know where's that going to get you long term we don't know we, we really don't know we know what we've been told by alternative experts we know what we've been told by the experts who are in the mainstream but what does your soul tell you what is your guidance what are you being called to do for you in your situation and we can't um control other people we just got to let them make the choices we've made we can lay out all this information um but it's their free will i don't think we need to be um fearful of people who've you know, I think that's a polarity that's going to make you paranoid and a lunatic and you want to stay well away from being paranoid. And yes, Rachel's planting trees. Yeah. If you listen to what the people in India are saying and the farmers, I did make a video. Uh, it's not my video. I posted a video this morning about what they were saying and why that's going on there. So you can look at that from that perspective. Could there be food shortages? I would imagine there may well be. Are you in alignment to food shortages or are you in alignment to abundance? You know, um, whether that's whether you're growing your own or whether you will align to foraging or someone giving you the food or, you know, whatever reality it is you're aligning to. So it's, it's such a personal journey you know, do you have past lives about dying of fear or hunger or malnutrition? If you've got those issues, then, you know, more than likely you're going to be alignment into panicking about what's going on next. So you'd be fearful of, oh, is there going to be enough food? You know, lack scarcity. And it's not like you can deny it. You can observe your own reaction to how you feel about what's happening outside of you and then go into abundance inside of you and then trust your intuition in what you're guided personally to do for yourself or your family or your situation um let's see what everyone else is saying uh Uh, nobody's saying anything else. <laughs> I think there's 17 of you join me. So I'm at the beach in Cornwall. The sun's just come out. It's been raining a lot. You know, that's another thing that people, you know, I've talked about it a lot. Other people have talked about being a lot of static in the air. And there is a lot of static because when you go through a solar minimum, you're going to have more radiation and radiation means static. Um, you're gonna maybe have more static because of technology being put in the air you know there's so many contributing factors to look at um but you need to discharge that static out of your body whether it's from standing barefoot 
you know, going in nature, wetting your hands more, you know, uh, making sure that your body is in harmony to nature and not so around technology too much, you know, um, especially if you're static, you know, you want to be getting that static out of your body, you know, posted about earthing blankets. There's lots of things you can do to get rid of static. Um, and wearing natural, I mean, I'm wearing a cashmere jumper now and I'm actually wearing a cotton, a cotton dress. If you've got static, I really wouldn't sleep on synthetic bedding. I would make sure that you have natural fiber bedding. I mean, hemp's the best, I think, for getting rid of static. Um, but don't sleep on polyester cotton mixed sheets if you can help it and certainly not 100% polyester. And um, also the other thing I talk about a lot is if you have shoes, you know, in general, we wear shoes that are EPV, which is, it means it doesn't earth you. It's it's a man-made resin, which is most shoes now are made with EPV soles. You know, back in the day, we'd have leather soles or we'd have um, natural rubber. So now we need to look at natural rubber soles or hessian soles, whatever it is, so that you're aware that, you know, in the past when you were walking, you'd be earthing. Now when you're walking in general, you're not really earthing most people anyway. Um, so that's an important thing to do. So taking your shoes off to earth. And so some people say, oh yeah, I take my shoes off. Yeah, in the house, that's not earthing. Taking, walking barefoot is about walking barefoot on the earth that's not about walking on synthetic fake grass it's really about walking on the earth naturally um yeah then rachel's saying you know someone's new earth ideas is not somebody else's yeah everyone has their own idea of where we're going and what we're doing and not everybody's going to the same reality because our frequency determines what reality we're going to be in so you know as much as you like somebody else if they're not on the same frequency as you they might not be going to the same reality as you because their frequency creates a reality so there's points where your frequencies kind of meet or they bypass each other and so that's why you go through phrases of seeing the same people you know in the pantomime of your life which is a cosmic pantomime we tend to see the same people for a while or maybe we shift something inside ourselves um and then we start seeing different people or maybe those people shift something inside themselves and then they start to see you more often um so those are contributing factors to creating our reality and i think we're going into a more harmonious heart-based reality it's maybe going to take a little while yet to be able to come together. Maybe things have got to get more challenging outside in the outside world for people to really come together and feel like they're co-creating together and they're not leaning on one person over another because um, that person has more skills than they do. It's like bringing your skills and gifts up to the similar vibration um so let's see is there anything else anyone saying hi al al Kim or whatever terry uh rachel uh yeah so i thought i'd just drop in with that today share that with you um i've been working in cornwall with the energies here which is on the cities of light so my little shell is where the cities of light are and the beach is gorgeous and um amazing energies really high vibrational frequency energies are coming in so you know when we talk about dimensions i think the dimensions are infinite but when we think about beings that were on the planet whether that was an individual or whether they were a collective group of individuals but most people are of the consensus that when the being if that being exists or whether it was a collective group of people that were called yeshua or Sananda, you know, that energy. Um, they were nine dimensional beings. Some people say they were Pleiadian beings. And, but I think that was 2000 years ago. So they came with this wisdom and knowledge to help humanity then in an ascension process. And maybe it didn't work out quite how they hoped. So we're being given this opportunity again. And we've probably got access now vibrationally to be beyond nine dimensions of existence definitely 
we can go into higher dimensions of existence now. Um, Chris has just joined us from Tasmania. I love Tasmania. Um, yeah, Rachel says, I once told her to choose a reality you prefer. Yeah, choose it. I think this is the thing. We don't realise how powerful you know and what everything is about now is about how much in a percentage scale of being how much responsibility you want not for other people but for yourself how much responsibility do you want and with a level of responsibility you get to choose a reality you prefer you can't choose a reality you prefer if you don't want responsibility for your life and your experiences that doesn't mean you're responsible for trauma that happened to you in childhood but you are responsible for facilitating a healing for that and finding a way to facilitate a healing, reaching out to people who can help you, finding things, creating a nurturing environment for healing, that you're responsible for, where you choose to live, who you choose to associate with, what you choose to do for a living. You know, many people have this belief, well, you know, I'm not gonna be able to pay my bills, how I'm gonna pay my mortgage, how's this? You know, they're always coming from this fear paradigm. Um, so they end up doing a job they don't like because they're in fear, they're in lack, um, they don't have a belief in abundance. We're going to be doing a meditation soon because um, I've been doing these little meditations on Facebook and I haven't done them while I was in Cornwall just because it, was, it went through a strange connection um, when I was here. But we're going to be doing some more deeper guided meditations on abundance and the multidimensional facets of what abundance truly is because it's not just about money. It's about the abundance of connecting with the right people you know in the broadest sense of abundance uh so let's just see if anyone said anything else uh no i don't think so so um remember all the past lives are coming up now to be resolved all the lives you haven't cleared all the ancestral lives the inner child any entities that have attached you know, which was a big entity attachment fest this last year by lowering your frequency and putting you into confusion or anxiety. And remember, my personal guidance was to, and I was getting this guidance for probably six or seven years or more, that you really, for my, my personal self where I was going, you really need to not have any attachment to pharmaceutical drugs. And I had, I think I've talked about it before, um, I'd been on thyroxine for an underactive thyroid after I got mugged and strangled when I lived in London. So I've been on that for 16 years and then I took myself off about five years ago and I had to go through fear to come off that as well and look into past lives linked to my throat and to get all the octaves back so that I could speak the light language codes in the full tonal frequency of what was possible in the resonance of my voice. So when I work with some of you, I'm often saying this is not your authentic voice. You know, you're not speaking, you can either have a voice that's too, too low or it's too like a child's voice. Um, so it's trauma, it's tra trauma in the throat chakra and it's got to be healed so that you can bring this resonance forward to speak your truth and to be heard and to, you know, um, to not be ridiculed as well, although people might ridicule you, but you can speak more eloquently and be heard by a higher percentage of people. So thank you for listening today. Uh, if you have any questions before I go, just quickly point them. Yeah, meditation's great. Um, I mean, I have a guided meditation. If you've never downloaded it, it, you can download it. It's a 42, 43 minute meditation. There's free ones when you sign up to my newsletter as well. And uh, you have to keep going. You know, I rang someone to, I didn't think someone, someone rang me, um, wanting to do a session with me. But, you know, the, the story I keep hearing with people is, so I've tried before and there, I can't get into my subconscious mind. You can, you can, but there's probably blockages in the way. Um, there's a myriad of reasons why people struggle in regression. One of them being is, um, you know, the obvious one, 
is kind of, but those kinds of people tend not to reach out for help is if they're narcissistic, they tend to be blocked because um, the trauma is too deep and they don't want to go into that. So they tend to block it themselves. Then you've got other people who've maybe got entities attached and some therapists aren't skilled at doing spirit releasement. So when the client gets blocked, they don't know it's an entity and they don't know how to help the person to release that and guide them through that. Um, the other thing is sometimes people have a very, very, they're not maybe, they're not necessarily narcissistic, but they've got a very controlling personality and they're used to being in control. So you've got to work through that as well to guide them into their subconscious mind. And it's like, I always say, it's like soaking the baking tin of the subconscious mind. So you've got to work through that for a while to get people into that. Uh, Oh, Terry's saying she had a regression with me many years ago and it was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's good to do it now as well um, because, you know, I've been doing this publicly for nearly 20 years. Well, yeah, nearly 20 years. Now. So the nuances of it and the complexities of it get ever more interesting and changing with people uh, to guide them in and using the light language has been an amazing tool and being since 2011 I've had the ability to work with people um you know on the phone or Skype before I used to always see them in person whereas now having those skills of being able to read the emotional Akashic records makes it easier to help people and expanding that repertoire of light language codes from the tones that can come forth is very healing because it embraces the dormant dna code so um i hope that helps i send you all much love and many blessings for today uh so do go to my website remember i've got lots of light languages for you to listen to and if you want to do your own personal codes um then you can book a session for that um and they can be half an hour sessions, but we weave between all the emotional stuff as well. And remember, we're going to be doing some live guided meditation on Facebook as well. So much love, many blessings from Cornwall and from the Cities of Light. Thanks for joining me today. Bye bye. Have a lovely day wherever you are in the world. Much love. Bye. Bye bye.